Okay, so welcome to this meditation. And I wonder if you'd be willing just to take a moment to see how you're feeling in this moment. What's arising for you? And just see how you are in this moment, how the breath is. The breath is such a great biomarker. What do I mean by biomarker? something that allows us to have a direct insight into how much self is present, how much self is available in the body, embodied. So let's, let's attune to the quality of the breath. And with that, there's no need to change how the breath is. By the sheer attuning and being with the breath, it tends to naturally soften, naturally deepen. Not because we are wanting it to be soft and deep, but because that is the natural flow, unencumbered by hearts that are wanting things to be different than what they are now. So the breath is a biomarker for the state of your embodied selfhood. And as you're attuning to the breath, you might notice your own heartbeat. In psychology, we call this introception. It's similar to the five senses. You might be able to hear sounds, coming into your ears. You might be able to smell. Maybe if you've just had breakfast, maybe if there's still some lingering scent of toast or hot porridge. Maybe you've had dinner. Maybe dinner is being cooked right now. And you feel 
the clothing on your skin. So those are very obvious, very obvious senses. Also taste and sight. But a very skillful, very useful for non-dual presence is something called introception. Our ability to attune and be with the internal activity, the breath, the heartbeat, the muscles, ligaments, a little tiny hairs. You might think there's not much movement going on as you're sat in meditation, but boy, inside, you're alive. There's constant, ever change changing activity going on on the inside. The tiny hairs on the surface of your body are currently being moved about by wind. So introception is our ability to guard, to cast the aware presence within. And introception is a fantastic biomarker itself of our ability to be in self, our true self. Now, introception doesn't mean that as we attune to the heart, we abandon everything else. We abandon the external world. That's not the aim. The aim is to be with the internal and the external as not separate. So one doesn't offset the other. One isn't better than the other. Typically, we get lost in the external activity of our family, the workplace. everything that's in the external world and we forget or we ne neglect the inner world. So introception helps us to rebalance that axis a little bit so that we can begin to balance the inner and the outer in such a way that we feel ourselves not separate. Distinct and unique, but not separate. And let's go back here just for a moment. Let's just sit in total silence. And let's attune to the breath and the heart.
Now, introception is not a, a laser focused light of attention. It's a diffuse, calm looking with. Sometimes we can call this withnessing. Being with the inner world. So see if you can invite any manager parts that are really wanting to get this right. That are holding bright light. See if they can put the torches down. Step back a little, give you a little bit of space. Show them who you are. Show them the gentle witnessing of self. There's no agenda here. It's a little bit like if you think back to the time when you felt really present, really attuned, really in your body. Maybe you were watching the sunset. Maybe watching the clouds, maybe by the fire. This is the type of soft attunement, soft gaze, soft viewing. It's expansive. Beyond the laser beam focused of our diligent, hard-working parts. Imagine opening up fully, expanding, expanding to that panoramic, wide-angle perspective of self. and include more of you. And keep, keep expanding that gaze to the point where you're right at the limit of your physical body and then go beyond. Beyond the space of the room you're in All the while, attuning to what's happening in the heart. Notice how you can be with the heart at the same time as being with the cosmic heart.
there's no separation in between you and the infinite. This is the ultimate truth. So for embodied non-dual practices, introception is so important to begin to feel at home in your body with your breath, with your heart. And then once we arrive at home, we realize that we've never truly left this place that we call home, that we call self. This is self with a capital S. This is the same self that Ramana Maharshi spoke of and the same self in IFS. When you come home, you realize that you, consciousness, aware presence, welcome breath and heartbeat within you. And this is why I say that the self is closer than the breath. So introception is a good first step. Becoming intimate with your being is a good first step towards non-dual being. And ultimately we realize that the breath, the heart, the objects in our inner world, thoughts, perceptions, they arise from and recede back to this ground of being, the aware presence. That's not putting it as better than, more important, It's a both and. When we get caught up in the laser beam focus of our parts, maybe a harsh inner critic, we have the opportunity to attune to the aware presence within which that inner critic appears to be in. It's not to bypass the inner critic, it's to actually allow it more space. Paradoxically, when we give parts more space, we can actually see them better. Im imagine as you holding your hand right up close to your face with your eyes open, very, very close, 
you can't quite see the details of your hand. A bit blurry, a bit out of focus. It's not until we actually peel the hand away from our face, further away to our eyes, that we begin to see the intricate detail, the lines on our hand. So the same thing with our parts, when they are very blended, Parts think that they're closer to self, but paradoxically, we tend not to be able to see them and have space for the parts. It's not until they have a bit more space, tune into that aware presence. That we can see them better, we can attune to them better. Notice how that is for you. Notice how we're able to allow the laser beam focus within the wide angle field of aware presence. Not either or, it's both and this is the witnessing we don't have to choose in between our imminence and our transcendence So to directly experience the body through introception is the first step towards non-dual presence. What appears to be in the way is the way. We need to go through it in order to see the beauty, the perfection, the luminosity, the radiance that is always there. Just as on a very cloudy day, We don't attempt to go around the clouds, try to find some way to get around it. We go through it. We traverse the layer of the cloud, itself composed of particles of light, of 
space. And then we pop out the other side and ah, it's sunny. Ah, there it was all along, all contained within one space, the clouds and the sun all exist within one space. We don't need to bypass the clouds. We go through what appears to be in the way and pop out the other side. Ah. Oh. So introception is us traveling through the layers of what's here, what's wanting to be witnessed, what's calling out for love. And here's the thing, what's calling out for love is love calling. This is the echo, this is the forgotten song. The sweetest melody of self that is calling back to itself. So what's calling out for love is love, back to itself. Why do parts call out for love if they didn't know love? Hearts must surely have some deeply, deeply ingrained experience of love in order to know themselves to not to be in love and therefore calling out for it, wanting it again. There must be a very deep imprint, even in prenatal parts. Of oneness, of unconditional love, of unconditional acceptance, of unconditional fulfillment. And it's that, that the parts want to go back to again. Let me go back there again. That time when I was in perfect oneness, in perfect love. So there's some spiritual teachings that call this the forgotten song. 
when we hear the echoes that there was once a time when everything was perfect. And the only reason parts call out for love is because they know that that's the deepest essence. Sometimes in modern psychotherapeutic models, there's this notion that unless we've had an experience of good enough and attuned care from our caregivers, then we somehow we 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 never learn it and therefore we're broken we're somehow damaged and from the perspective of ifs and deeper in from the non dual perspective that simply is not the case The truth is that we know ourselves as love deep, deep down, far, far in. Because when we're calling out for love, it is love that is calling. It's the echo, the forgotten song drawing us in, beckoning us back, back home, come back, come back. And it's the sweetest sound. On the surface, it appears as suffering and pain and contraction. But when we don't turn away from it, when we use the tools of introception, when we go through the layers of thick gray cloud, we always pop out the other side and the other side, this clear blue open sky. So whenever we do begin to notice ourselves contract, this is an invitation to attune. Asking any fixer, therapist, healer parts of ourselves to also take a break so that the panoramic, wide angle, witnessing of self can be present. Show them the face before you were born. Show these parts who you really are. When I say show, I don't mean have an image in your mind of who you are. Know who you are. Know it. Well, 
What do I mean by no? This is a this isn't an intellectual knowing. So that can be a helpful thing. I mean, this is an embodied knowing. The kind of knowing that right now all of us sat here are naked beneath our clothes. We don't need to start to strip our clothes off in order to prove that. We just know it. It's an experiential, embodied, unshakable, imperturbable knowing. This is why in ancient Greek, Greece, all this old build buildings had the slogan, know thyself. It was one of the most important phrases, to know thyself. And I would pose that this is an intellectual knowing by studying scriptures, texts. This is intuitive, embodied, capital K knowing. Know who you are. And we begin by introception. We begin by attuning to the closest thing that's here. And that might be a part of us that is in deep shame. But we go there straight off. We attune to this part. That is the path. of embodied knowing. So the breath and the heartbeat are good first biomarkers. Good first insights, glimpses of whereabouts are we? Whereabouts are we in non-dual presence? Or are we a little bit closer to a part? And then once, once we can gauge, so this is discernment, once we can discern with the help of the biomarker whereabouts we are, we can more lovingly attune and give space and attention to what's calling out for love. So... These biomarkers are not tools to bypass what's apparently in the way. They are tools to go through or to pass through, to witness or witness.
deep sea divers don't get to the bottom of the sea by bypassing water. They dive straight through the thermoclines. Every 10 meters, there seems to be a different climate. What will I find here? Curiosity. Presence. Patience. As we one by one inch our way through the layers. What's at the bottom of the ocean? Us humans seem to love diving for pearls, jewels, unusual flora and fauna deep down. We seem to fear traversing the layers of our suffering and our pain. Because when we went through it, when we were little, it over overwhelmed us. It was too much for us. But now the self is here. Once we have the perspective, the presence of self, we can confidently dive in, inching our way through the thermoclines, down, down, down. Or if you like, the metaphor of the clouds, traversing the cloud layer up, up, up. It doesn't matter which, which one, whatever resonates for you. But what we find isn't the terrible something that we've been afraid of. Quite the opposite. Carl Jung says 90% of the shadow is gold. That's what we find. We find gold. We find the original love song. We find the self singing a lullaby. So you see, the self is both the diver and the medium through which is being dived through. <laughs> the self is the traveler, the path, and the space within which the path, path occurs. This is the playing hide and seek with yourself. And this is why we say that, that this is a pathless path. Because we appear to traverse something. And yet we haven't traveled. 
at, at all. We haven't moved. What a paradox. And the true embodied mastery of this human life is to be with this paradox. Immanence and transcendence, form and formlessness, stillness and movement. And round and round we go. So when we, we awaken to self, it isn't a one-off really. Because the self is a very playful rascal and the self keeps on playing the game of hide and seek. So we, we awaken and then we fall asleep and we awaken and we fall asleep. But each time we, we awaken, we go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in. Again, there's a sense of a journey. And yet we haven't traveled. When I say deeper, I'm not assigning any dimensions here. a dimensionless depth. What a paradox. So in order to live embodied non-dual presence is to develop a taste for paradox. We need to develop a palate. You know, when, when children first try foods they don't like, apparently science tells us that they need to try it at least seven times. at different points in their lives. So when we first face paradox, it sort of leaves a bit of a funny taste in our mouth. Oh, I don't like that. Oh God, that was so hard and so painful. Oh, didn't like that one bit. And then we come to it again and we go, oh, still, oh, didn't really like that. And then over and over and over again, the more paradoxes we meet with wide angle perspective of self, the more we develop a taste. Oh, wait, I quite like that. That was okay for me. 
not quite sweet bliss yet, but it's okay. It's better than the tangy, bitter taste <laughs> that it first had when I sampled Paradox. So we mature, we acquire a taste for Paradox. This is key to embodied non-dual presence. Introception, paradox, panoramic pers perspective. Simple as that. So I think I've said enough now. I've said enough for this session. Let's just uh, notice how it feels to return to the body. Body on the surface that you're sat on, feet on the floor, The breath, the heart. Maybe you might want to open your eyes and orient yourself around the space you inhabit. We're meeting the external world with the same aware presence as we meet the internal world. Mm. Thank you.